What is up, Ravens Flop? Huge shout out for your support for the 410 Sports Talk. Chance and Glenn are the best in the business. They're killing it right now. They love talking Raven talk. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel. Let's go, Ravens. Big trust. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of 410 Sports Talk. I am James Haskell, along with my co host, Glenn Martin. And the offseason has just begun, and we are ringing it in with all, answering all your questions, debating all your issues when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens, and we're excited to do so. Yesterday, we talked about Greg Roman. We're going to stay on the coaching staff and talk about his counterpart today, uh, Glenn, uh, the mm -hmm. one, the only, Don Wink Martindale. But before we get into it and hand out our our uh, pieces of blame pie to the to the responsible members and talk about what our opinions of, of old Donnie Boy are, Take a second, hit the subscribe button. As always, uh, you know, it's the easiest and most impactful way you can support the show. Uh, turn on your notifications because the Ravens news is coming out quick and fast, and we are here to deliver it to you. Also, stay up to date because we have some exciting guests coming up, the one and the only heavy hitting. Jeff Zrebeck will, will be with us next week. So yep. lots of big things to come. But, Glenn, let's get into the the – the one and the only, like I said, Wink Martindale, maybe one of the swaggiest defensive coordinators in the NFL. Oh, there's no about maybe about it. Yeah, <laughs> there's no maybe. No one has more swag in the ranks of coaching than uh, Wink Martindale, no doubt about that. But, but the question is the same. Do you think, like you said, we have we out have we outgrown even a Wink Martindale? Right? Have we gone as far as we can with Wink? Yeah, that's certainly been a, a question when you have a defense that performed as poorly as the Ravens did this past season. I think. You have to open up the, the the door to all questions and all possible solutions. And so, um, while we are, you know, we like Wink. We think he's, uh, you know, he's a guy that fits, you know, here in Baltimore, and and certainly has. I think he has some qualities that we all like. But we have to explore all options in order to try and get this team back on the right track after a disappointing eight and nine finish, despite starting eight and three and being first uh, seed in the AFC at one point and then falling all the way out of the playoffs at season's end. So I just want to give you, you know, some, some recap of what the Ravens did defensively this season, and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, so in points, the Ravens ranked 19th, uh, giving up a total of 392 points on the season. Um, so that's a far cry of what we're used to seeing. And then yards, 25th in the season, as far as yards given up and how it breaks down passing and rushing, it's a pretty stark difference. They were number one in the league in, in giving up uh, rushing yards, and then they were dead last in the league in surrendering, surrendering almost 5,000 passing yards in the season, as well as 31 touchdowns to go on top of that. So good against the run, horrible against the pass. Um, and also – didn't didn't cause a lot of turnovers. They they forced just 15 turnovers on the season, which ranks 29th out of 32 teams. So, I mean, really, no matter how you look at it, unless you just focus on the rushing numbers, it was a tough season for Wink and those boys on defense. Um, but I want to give a little bit more perspective, if you give me a second, Jimmy, yep. because this isn't his first year, of course, with the Ravens. He's been here. Uh, he started – he took over the defense in 2018. So let me just give you – Quickly, as I said, this year he's 19th in points and 25th in yards and had zero pro bowlers on the defensive side of the ball. First time maybe ever that a Ravens ew, defense ew. didn't have a single pro bowler. Um, but let's go back to what he did uh, in 2018, his first year here. Yeah. First year here, he was second in the league in points, first in the league in yards surrendered as a defense, and he had three pro bowlers coached on that defense. That's pretty good, right? One and yeah. two in points and yards. Then in 19, this defense was third in points surrendered and fourth in yards given up and had a total of four Pro Bowlers on this team. Last year, just last year in 2020, they were second in points surrendered and they were seventh in yards surrendered and had three Pro Bowlers. So for his time here in Baltimore, if you average it out, since he's taken over in 2018, the Ra he has the number two overall defense in his time here. Mm -hmm. So while this year was a, a, a certainly a dip, if you look at the overall, I mean, what's your thoughts when I kind of give you these overall? Right. So, picture? so let me ask you this before I give my thoughts: Is that your way of saying you want to ride with Wink? You want to? You feel like you I'm haven't simply, hit the end of the road? I'm simply putting down. Sounds uh, like that's what you're saying. 
Well, I mean, if you want, I can go into that. But at first, I wanted to kind of set the okay. scene because you can look All at right, this. Well, let just me let me do year. the same. Let me do the same because I have some. <clears throat> let me state my case as well, and then we can kind of go. At least my thought process, kind of like you mentioned. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, number one, having no Pro Bowl is obviously brutal. Having the t- injuries that he had uh, is is obviously brutal. But this is what I don't want to see. I don't want the commenters saying no excuses for the injuries. No excuses for the injuries. That's all I saw about Greg Roman. And look, I'm. I always get ramrodded for saying I want to keep Greg Roman. And like, I get there's a lot of issues there, but I don't want to hear, I don't want Wink to get a pass when Greg doesn't like equitable treatment is, is not too much to ask for. Is all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I want to mention that uh, the Ravens were last in the league this year in yards per yards, surrendered per play at six. The closest team was at five and a half. Mm -hmm. Uh, The closest to them. So, uh, fourth or excuse me, most, uh, fourth quarter leads lost. They were third. And this is a good thing. All of that. They were still third in third down percentage. Um, 5.19% of the passing plays were sacks. A- 28th in the league. And this is what has me concerned about Wink Martindale, Glenn. Mm-hmm. It's some of the guys that have left and prospered. You've said it before. We've heard the Ravens say it. What are the two most impactful things they can do on a defense? Cover the pass and rush the passer. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. What did Zadarius Smith do when he left? I mean, oh, what he did he off. turn into? Right. What did Matt Judon just do this year? Mm-hmm. Yep. He so went off. Th- that gets me a little concerned. While guys obviously have prospered within our system, it does make me a little nervous to see other guys absolutely kill it and they're not killing it here in Baltimore right now that could be a, a system thing and based on all winks blitzes it's kind of more evenly distributed instead of just having your blue chip guys on the outside but that that does concern me so I, I'm a little nervous with you know, I I go back to what game was the oh the Bears game remember the Andy Dalton fourth and 11 mm-hmm. you know people talk about bonehead plays a lot of people will say now I I, I understood your point at that moment but a lot of people will say that was a bonehead play by Wink Martindale. Um, and, you know, go, doing, you know, doing his vaunted traditional, you know, zero cover or cover zero and going after the quarterback, right. Making it a, a, a ticking time bomb. Either you're getting it out of your hands or you're getting rock type thing. So that's my case for and against Wink Martindale. I think he's done some good things. Like you said, the third down percentage is good. Obviously had a lot of injuries, um, and he has the the culture. I think he does some good things to help young guys uh, mentally. But I don't know if we're seeing any of our most recent draft picks develop uh, too well. Now, I'm really talking about Patrick Queen. But what has Malik Harrison done? Uh, what is – I mean, even – I'm not going to go that far. I mean, Anthony Averett obviously has developed. But I think about those two guys. So my point is – that's where I'm at. So your you. your not... biggest gripe, I just want to get this clear. Your biggest gripe is that two individual players had better seasons after they left. No, that's not my biggest gripe. That's a part of my thought process. Okay. Um, that, that's because I want to point it. something out. So I agree with you. It's odd that players tend to have more individual pass rush success when they leave, or at least those those couple of high, you know, the upper echelon guys. We've yeah. seen that with those guys. But Would you be surprised to hear that the Ravens last year, when Judon was here, had three more sacks in total than the Patriots did this year with Judon there? So despite the fact that Judon himself had a far better season there, we had more total sacks than the Patriots did this year, last year when he was with us. So, yeah, he may use guys, um, you know, he may have used Judon as a way to get other guys free. So he spread the sack total out over a you know greater number yeah. of guys instead of just one guy getting the bulk of it. But in the end, what matters most is not who gets the sack, is that a yeah. sack is gotten, right? Sure. It's not it's not necessarily we don't need to have one guy get 15 as long as the cumulative cumulative get get that How'd 15. What's that? What did we do this year? Well, this year, let's see. Last year we had 20 or we had 39 on the season. Uh let's see what we have this year. Now, this year, no doubt that we had a worse group. You know, as far as names go, we had probably our worst group. You know, that that was our area, our biggest area of concern heading into the season was our pass rush. So this year we had 34 total sacks. And you the said New last Eng- year was 39? 
Your and the New biggest... England Patriots had 36. They had two more over a full yeah. game. I mean, a full season of games. So, yeah, Judon has more, but does that really matter as far as wins and losses that mm-hmm. one guy got it and not two different no, guys? No, no, I, I don't it? think I don't think it does. I don't think it does. But um, this is the funny thing that that I think you you kind of painted a picture uh, for me is that every year, progressively, while not a precipitous drop like this year, the statistics, relatively speaking, have gotten a bit worse, right? Like you mentioned, like first and second, third and fourth, and then like second and seventh. And, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. it's kind of dropped a little bit. And then this year, obviously, there's this, re- a, in a lot of categories, a bad drop, a lot of it yeah. based on injury. Yeah. Hasn't it kind of been the same for Greg? <laughs> well, I just think I that's mean, funny. I know well, I, we're not even talking about Greg, com- but it, you're talking complimentary football. So if your offense is worse, your right. defense tends to be worse it, as it, well. Yeah. So anyway, that just makes me laugh. But I, so I want to know your answer. It sounds like. So but. so no, I, I so my answer is I'm completely fine with Wink Martindale. Look, there's always times where people are open for criticism. I'm not saying yeah. that he's infallible and that he hasn't made any mistakes. I think leaving guys on islands at times when they're not, you know, that's really not what mm-hmm. they, what they can worthy. do. This isn't Marlon and Peters when he was leaving mm-hmm. guys on islands. Mm-hmm. A lot of times he was leaving Chris Westry on an island. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of that, although I get it. You know, his point is if you sit back in zone, he's just going to, you know, they're just going to kill you. They're going to nickel and dime you you and they'll dice you up. Or you can send some pressure and rather than give up a play, I mean, a touchdown and a 10 10 play, you know, seven and a half minute drive. Yeah, you might give up a quicker score. But you what you also might do is force an errant throw. You might get a, a sack that pushes them and forces a punt. You might get. There's just more opportunities. Whereas if you just continue to play soft and sit back in a zone, you just allow them to to pick you apart, you know, little by little. And I and I certainly understand the other philosophy because the guy he took over for was Dean Pease, who who believed in the bend but don't break. He believed that okay, if you want to put together a 10, 12 play drive, all we need is one mistake in those 10 to 12, and then maybe we can take advantage of it. So we'll let you, we'll give you some underneath stuff. We'll let you have some yards between the 20s and we'll try and stiffen up, you know, in the red zone. So I certainly understand both sides of it, but I think you it's hard to argue with the success and and what matters most is points. And until he had our entire secondary go down, um he was second, third and second in his first 3 years. Yeah. So yeah. you're talking top 3 in points and overall even including this year, his overall defense since he took over, he ranks second in the league. So yeah. To me, it, it, I give him a pass. I think he's a great leader of men. I think guys play hard for him. They fight for him. I think he has a, a, a very creative way. I, I listened to Aaron Rodgers after um, the Ravens narrowly lost the game against Green Bay in Baltimore, and he said he saw a way of defending Devontae Adams that he's never seen before. I mean, imagine showing Aaron Rodgers something he's never seen before. you got to really mm-hmm. you got to really pull out something out of the old vault, as we talk about here. Um so to me, I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him a pass and and say that look, we were it's not like we were, we were still number one in the against the run. We weren't completely futile in every area. Sure, but, but what area was hit most on his defense by injuries? And it was the secondary. So it yeah. kind of makes sense that we saw uh, the secondary just get absolutely shredded. Now I don't want to see that happen again. And if if there's injuries, I hope he's better prepared to deal with them next year than he was you know this year. But it's hard to argue when you lose both your Pro Bowl corners. You know, your your, your backup uh, in, in Tavon Young is in and out. He ended up playing a good portion of the games, but he's in and out, and he's relatively small. Um, so I'm going to give him a pass. What, what, do you, what do you think about what I just said there? Yeah, so um promise that this is the last time that I bring it up, but all the things that you just said, you could literally cut and copy and paste and, and provide as valid reasons for Greg, if you just simply change the name. But Greg has never had a good passing scheme here. Whereas No, Greg has never Greg had has a, been good at both every year until this year. Yeah, but he's still look, with way more of an impact in the running offense, he still mm-hmm. produced a solid running offense with way more of an impact. Um, so I think just as much as Wink was hurt, I mean, he lost Lamar. Think about that. The guy who is the most dynamic playmaker in the NFL. But anyway, uh what I what I what I would say is this. I'm totally on board as well. Uh, as much as I wanted to build a case against Wink, Martin, Wink Martindale, I'm okay with him staying here, but this is what I've got to see. 
next year. Is that like, I know he can't tackle people. Whatever you got to do as a coach, you need to teach, you need, guys need to tackle. Uh, also some player development. Like I want to see Patrick Queen make sizable uh, uh, improvements. I want to see Adafe Owe make sizable improvements. Like I want to see players continue to improve individually uh, because if we're going to go through this whole, you know, the Ravens draft, they're not the Rams they're the anti Rams, right? So if we're going to do that, we need to develop. So I, I want to see some player development with the young guys. Now we, ha- it's not that we haven't seen any ties. Bowser, obviously he's developed a Chuck Clark. Like there's been players that have developed. So at some point it comes down to the player. Um, but I, I, I want to see uh, a little bit more impact on the individual players, which eventually makes the Ravens better. Like I, I, I once again, I know he can't tackle. He can't go out there and say, yeah. I'm going to tackle the player, but like, whatever you got to do, Don, like wait, get out there and like make, put them in pads every day until they stop missing tackles. You're allowed to. C- right. CBA. But, so, but you understand my point, no, right? Yeah, like, I, yeah. I mean, you want to clean those things up, but I mean, you said it yourself. He doesn't do the tackling and I'm sure right. he's stressing it, but whatever you got to do, I agree with you. We got to clean up the big plays. And you got to do something to help Patrick Queen. Yeah. You got to do something as a coaching staff and as an organization to help Patrick Queen mask his limitations. I don't yeah. think we can keep putting him in these scenarios and expect something different to happen. Yeah, and, and of course, with a first-round pick, you get more leeway than you do if you're a late-round pick. So he's yeah. gotten the opportunity to you know, yeah. to show if he's going to sink or swim yeah. more often than a lot of guys do because of his draft status. So and and Yeah, and this is how the Ravens can help Wink. I've said it a million times, the third oldest defense. Let's get some some studs in the early part of that well, draft. They got, they got a lot of picks. Yeah, so let's get some young blood in here that can move and fly and run around mm-hmm. and mix it up with a little bit of the ves- veteran presence that we have. I think it'll be interesting. But either way, but how different would the? Uh, let me just ask you, how different do you think this secondary would have looked if Peters would have been in there? Just Peters, just one guy. Very, very much different. I mean, Nightmare. very much different. Uh, yeah. Could could have made an an absolute difference. It's yeah. I mean, he he battled with a ton of injuries. Yeah. So look, I a lot of people want Wink gone. Yeah. I think the there'd only, be a lot of people happy if we fired Wink. I think yeah. there'd be a line at the, his door yeah. looking for his services. The the only thing that sometimes, I know they're two different people, but I, you can't say one anyway. Just equitable treatment is important to me. I know that's dumb. But mm-hmm. like, man, you can't just gloss up. You can't say one thing for another and then say, oh, this doesn't apply to him. It's like, so... And I'm speaking about the coordinator. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think he stays. I don't think there's any way Wink is going anywhere. I think Baltimore knows what they have. I think he fits the culture. And I think he's a good coach. So I agree with you. I think there'll be a line out the door. It'll be interesting, you know, with the Giants looking for head coach. They wanted to interview him before. So let us know what your guys' thoughts are on Wink Martindale. We saw a lot of comments in our a video regarding Greg Roman about Wink saying you want them both gone. So let us know what your thoughts are. If you want him gone, why? If you want him to stay, why? And we love hearing back from you guys. So we uh, will be responding to the comments and we'll talk to you guys soon. See See you.